you might run a thousand dollars against it and get no sales, and you'll be like, fucking Gary. But meanwhile, what I know is that you did get sales, you can't attribute it to it. So now people feel fond towards you. Three weeks later, they decide to buy it. They just go to the website because they know who you are, but you can't point to the ad, and you're like, the ad didn't work. Gary, thanks for having us. You've been a huge inspiration to how we built Leah. We've listened to a ton of your 4D, so it's an honor to be here. Right? Humbled. Um, I'd love to give you just a bit of a yeah, plan so you, you can have more context, but. We launched last year. I think the first year was us really figuring out do we have product market fit? Does sure. this resonate? We've hit that. We're a mid six figure business right now. We're profitable. We're reinvesting every dollar in, so we're barely profitable. Um, For customer acquisition? No, we have not done any paid marketing, no paid All word of mouth. Yeah. Yep. So that's kind of how we built the business in case you want to share more about Makes sense. Content. Yeah, we both heard uh, one of your podcasts one night and then the next day decided we're doubling down on content. So we're doing about three to four pieces of content per social platform. We have a newsletter and we're per, a, uh, for Instagram. That I understand. Three or four per platform per week, day? Per day. Per day. Mm -hmm. So how many, what total per day? Uh, per, oh, um, six, 12 to Love, 12 love to, you. Yeah, 20. So pumped with you. Yeah, and then we And it's working? Oh, it's, it's been so wonderful. Well. Did everybody hear that? Yeah. <laughs> three times a week? <laughs> go ahead. I mean, three times a day. There we go, my man. <laughs> Progress. So we're doing a little bit of influencer marketing in the beginning, and then we decided to double down on our own content. Yes. It's working way better. Yes. Yeah. So it's been fun. Um, you know how, like, you know, like I always tell people in this one, they're always like, Gary, why is that? I'm like, you know how you love, we all love children? Like children, we universally all agree, like we love this seven-year-old, we love our children more. Yeah. An influencer can only love your product so much yeah. compared to you. Totally. Yeah, so newsletter, about to start a podcast, which we'll probably put on YouTube and we're trying to decide all of that right now. Um, you wanna talk about that for half a sec? Cause it's super important, I think you'll do well. Yeah, we started to record content. Um, we're trying to decide here. We're, in, we're uh, interviewing a lot of experts, but we also want to do our own original content. So we're we started recording, but we haven't figured it out exactly. When you say your own original content, just you guys on the show? Just us. Yeah. So I would do both in one show. Let me tell you how to figure it out. Back to and versus or. Think in segments. I think the show should start with five to seven minutes of you guys. Think about. Oh, Regis and Kelly, like they like banter in the morning, like blah, 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 blah. guess, 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 close the show. So I think the way you should do it is do six, seven, eight minutes of you guys, 30 minutes with the guest, six, seven minutes of you guys to close out. Maybe that one has like a little segment or a little game or hot take or you do something with each other or like for name association or whatever and then you're done. And then you have the post-production for all of it. Segments. And the way we're thinking about it, so YouTube for sure, and I have a podcast, I've been doing it for like two and a half years weekly, personal, just passion of mine that gives me energy. And, Love that. Um, thank you. And we had some health interviews and we saw it really works. So we now want to double down on YouTube. I guess for us, like, I don't know if I'm being too conservative with our marketing dollars. We have not spent anything. Like, what do you think, how do you think we should prioritize? Well, you can't get more conservative than zero. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I probably need some help, but Ed, should we be spending, where should we be focusing on marketing? I mean, doubling down on YouTube, like that makes sense. When you guys have, tell me a good war story of a piece of organic content that went viral, go. Uh, I, well, which one were you gonna say? I, was, I mean, we have a few, but one on Instagram, it was like over a million, it was this like cocktail, mocktail that we did. You, should, you, you should take that video and run ads against that, against target audiences. Because the algorithm, aka the human beings, everyone's like, Mark Zuckerberg, China. It's fucking humans responding to shit. These platforms are very simple. They just want people to stay on it for as long as possible so they can run ads. So they're not, like, like Zux isn't pushing propaganda of like you loving VR. They're just fucking math. Mm -hmm. And so, so for you, that mocktail mm -hmm. should be turned into an ad. Even if it's not like, because we do a lot of education, so even if it's not our specific product, it's a healthy, hormone-friendly. Correct, product. it's giving people awareness to your brand. Mm -hmm. It might not be sales-oriented. Mm -hmm. Like you might run $1,000 against it and get no sales, and you'll be like, fucking Gary. But meanwhile, what I know is that you did get sales, you can't attribute it to it. So now people feel fond towards you. Three weeks later, they decide to buy it. They just go to the website because they know who you are, 
but you can't point to the ad and you're like, the ad didn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, the ad's definitely going to work because it already went viral. People are interested. I'm incredibly bullish on everybody here running ads after it succeeded on organic. That's something that we haven't lived in for a long time because it's not how the platforms worked. Mm -hmm. So we have it way better than we did the last 10 years. We had to guess and run money or run micro money, see if it worked and then poured fluid on it. Now the algorithm does a better indicator if it's gonna work than even our micro ad spends. So like to me, if you're gonna test some stuff, test it on the things that go viral on your 12 a day. Okay, got it. Yes, at some point, the holy grail for DTC businesses is to find scalable math that works in CAC and LTV. The problem is most of them aren't actually working profitably. They're using VC money to subsidize their underwater CAC and LTV. And then there's eventually a funny game of chicken of can you sell it before your math runs out? Which is a fucking challenging game. And one that I don't like to play because it's like a fake business. See how the B guy got going? Because he knows, that's what he sees every day, right? That they're on the other side trying to decide is this sustainable or is this is a moment in time and da, da, da. Keep going. Yeah, and I mean, one thing that we're not doing right now, we're doing three to four pieces of content, but we're using that same content on different platforms and that's gotten us to where we are. So what do you- Are you changing the copy? We are. Good, well, so you'll take the same video, yeah. Maybe. So like, that's a quick hack that can really help a lot of people here. It's the same video, but the copy's different because the audience is different on TikTok than it is on LinkedIn, than it is on Twitter. So something to think about, just copy changes or just slight little edit changes can matter. Yeah, we've been doing it a little bit for YouTube, uh, like the things that people search on. Shorts? On the shorts. Shorts. And what are you seeing? Oh, Ish. Some, some traction, mm-hmm. but I think yeah, we're also gathering, we're talking to Joe, maybe making content exclusively for YouTube. Look, even I have a repurposing model with context, but like there is no comparison. When you can make for a platform, because when I'm saying, hey, TikTok, versus hey, everyone, there's a noticeable difference. Mm-hmm. It just, you know, I'm running a ton of businesses, so it's hard for me, so I get it, and, but it's real. But the copy, for sure. Don't mail that in because it doesn't take a lot of time. You know, like there's certain things that you can mail in, aka like you just don't have the time or resources energy. Mm -hmm. But the copy, that's mundane. Like yes, I know it's easier to control C and control V, but like thinking like this person's on Instagram versus this person's on TikTok matters. Copy in the description and title if you have it on the content. Yeah, if you're in the editing mode and you can change the title, like titles, the thumbnail and titles. I mean, I don't know if you saw the viral video of Mr. Beast, like he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Now he's playing at the single highest level, but I understand I'm spending millions of dollars on a team that is doing the same thing in theory. It's, It's actually scary how much the title and the thumbnail works, which is why if you have a piece of content, keep this in mind, that you really like, you just feel good about it, and you post it and didn't go, retitle it, change the preview screen, change the copy, go again three months later, six weeks later, four weeks later. Well, I feel like we have a product that, I mean, we have- How much is it? It's 45, so we have a one month bundle because you take it daily, it's a daily thing to support your hormones. So it's 55 for one month and then you can get three months which drops it down to 45 a month. And there's no one year? We don't have a one year. Why? No reason. (laughs) What I like about one year is people forget to unsubscribe and like, like things of that nature and like, you know, like it's definitely worth debating. You have longer tail, you know, to re-get somebody to, to get somebody to re-up at month four versus the amount of people that forget or are passive or neutral yeah. or apathetic to it for one year is a lot of money. That's interesting, yeah. How big is your drop off after three months? The average right now for our users is 4.8 months that they're with us. Yeah, I literally think if you go to 12 months instead of three months, that that number would be 9.7 months. And if you're ever gonna go raise money, they're gonna want to scale on the Yeah, they're yeah. gonna be scared shitless of that if you're gonna raise capital. Yeah, yeah. It's just too expensive to re-engage. Yeah. What are you doing with your lapsed users? I got something really good for you. I got a real good one for you, ready? Yes. I think that you should call on speakerphone every single person who's no longer subscribed and once was for three months. I think you should videotape the interaction of you saying thank you 
not try to sell them to re-up, but just to build a relationship around the content. Mm -hmm. And when you have successful conversions, you ask them if they will allow you to put out the video of this successful reconversion. I think there's something there, there, there. Well, first of all, the reason you should do it is market research. Yeah. I'm adding content creation and reactivation of business. Mm -hmm. And I think you're small enough still where you could just grind that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, we are all about radical customer support. Yeah, so calling, literally calling and saying, I just want you to, I just, we just want to thank you for ever being on our service Mm -hmm. and just hopefully it brought you some value and hope it sprung you into action theoretically, whether, you know, we're obviously aware that you're no longer using us, but I hope it's sprung you into a better you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The most, so I used to do this quite a bit for Wine Library. The most fun part of the phone phone call is when you're done just doing love and good and there's this awkward three second pause because they're waiting for you to give them an offer to reactivate, yeah. but you don't. Yeah. Try it, even if you don't record it, which is probably the biggest friction of everything I just told you, I think the market research you'll get to why people unsubscribed. Yeah. Like by the 19th call, if they all said the berries were the problem, you're like, oh fuck, should we even have berries? Mm-hmm. Like, it, like it's real market research. Mm-hmm.